This is my first proper video game review, but there's a much larger cause for celebration to which I'd like to draw your attention. Yes, this 19th of June marks a very important event in our nation's history. I could get into what's so important about June 19th, but I have a guest who would like to say a few words first. The floor recognizes the representative from Indiana. The congressman who represents Muncie, Indiana and Delaware County, home to the most famous cat in the world. I rise today for the awesome and important duty to pay a happy birthday wish to Garfield. Not President Garfield, but someone probably more famous in this day and age than that. A large, orange, slovenly, lazy cat born in the mind of an Indiana native by the name of Jim Davis, who, along with Garfield and literally dozens of artists and artisans, make their home near Muncie, Indiana, the world headquarters of Paws Incorporated. It was, in fact, today in 1978 that the Garfield strip debuted in 41 U.S. newspapers. Thank you, Representative Pence. Yes, today is Garfield's birthday. The Garfield franchise has a long list of beautifully crafted licensed games, and I may get around to more of them in due time. There's one in particular that I want to display today that really captures the geist of this early summer season. That game is Garfield Go. Now, I want you all to remember back to about three summers ago, Nintendo suddenly decided to enter the mobile game space. They released Pokemon Go, which is basically an augmented reality walking simulator with pocket monsters. Weird concept, I know, but it somehow turned out to be stupid popular. As with any viral mobile game, there came a whole slew of knockoff games that intended to capitalize on the craze. One of those games was Garfield Go. Paws Inc., Garfield's parent company, licensed this company to make the game. How do you even say that? Freizatag? Looks Germanic. Anyway, doesn't matter. A friend showed this game to me way back in the summer of 2017, and I finally got around to downloading it for myself. It refuses to load on my LG G8, so I will be playing on my old G5. We're off to a great start already. I can feel it. Once I got the game to work, I came to this screen. It's basically your standard AR walking simulator. What else can I say? The in-game landscape maps to my GPS location. When I walk, Garfield walks. Well, there are also times when he clips all over the place and slides around without moving his feet. There are collectible coins dispersed throughout the game world. I'll get back to what the coins do in a little while. And let me tell you, running around in real life to collect virtual coins is fun. Especially with this collision detection. It's just really fun. There are also the circus tents, which are the game's analogy to Pokemon Go's gyms. I guess. In Pokemon Go, the gyms appear at landmarks like parks and monuments. It's almost the same idea here. However, I've found the criteria for which buildings are and aren't tents to be highly arbitrary. I tried this out on my college campus, by the way. I expected that tents would appear at the more prominent pub areas, like the main lecture hall and the library. That's not the case, though. They appeared at one of the smaller lecture halls, this obscure government office that I hadn't even heard of before Garfield Go, and these two otherwise unremarkable residence halls that happen to be right next to each other. Once I'm in range of a tent and I click on it, Garfield makes a snarky comment and I get to choose one of the three games. Hey there! Oh, it's you. I was hoping it was a pizza guy. Hey there! Welcome to my world. Careful where you step. One game has the player throwing rings onto sticks. 
I throw the rings by swiping upwardly on the screen, similarly to how one might throw a monster ball in Pokemon Go. There's another game in which Garfield points at different foods that he wants, and I try to feed them to him in the correct order. The sequence increases in length by one with each round. It's basically Simon. Look at the face that he makes when I touch the wrong food. Seeing Garfield's disappointment in me, I genuinely feel bad for messing up. Garfield is a master manipulator. Not only has he guilted me into supporting his self-destructive lifestyle, he's made me feel that I'm responsible for his satisfaction. When I don't meet his expectations, I feel disappointment in myself on his behalf. And, uh, there's this third game. When I flip one of these squares, I get the prize that appears on the other side. I can keep going and flip several squares, or I can stop at any point and keep my earnings. If I flip the square with the spider on it, I lose all of my prizes. It's an interesting system of risk and reward. The farther that I get, the more likely it is that the next square that I flip will be the spider. It's quite simple, but also unique. I'll say that it's pretty cool. I like it. Garfield Go allows me to play two of these games within a short span of time. Then there's a ridiculously long eight hour cooldown before the tents open again. You might be wondering what's the ultimate purpose of these minigames. If I do reasonably well in a game, I can earn collectible food. I then put the food in the oven and wait for it to cook. Rarer foods, like the cake, take longer to cook. There's the option to expedite the process by spending coins. Now, what does the food do once it's done cooking? Here, it gets even more complicated. When Garfield appears in AR mode, there's a chest that accompanies him. Con the chests contain hats and items that one can exchange for f coins. When I cook food, it makes special chests more likely to appear. They contain rarer hats and items. So, here's where I'm up to now. I've visited the tents. I've played Garfield's games. I've earned food. I've put the food into the oven. I've waited for it to cook. Now I'm finally ready to summon Garfield. Even though he's the on-screen avatar, I still have to summon him for some reason. To get him to appear, I have to collect a certain number of coins in the overworld. Coins that I earned in minigames do not count towards this. Garfield then appears in augmented reality and I have three attempts to flick the lasagna into his bowl. He then disappears and I have to find him. It's not much of a hiding game, most of the time he spawns directly behind me. If I do all of this just right, I finally get a hat. And let me tell you, this white fedora has been a long time coming, and Garfield looks straight pimpin'. Why there are so many cryptic, complicated rules around earning a hat in an AR game, I don't know. There are also a few hats that you can buy. I decided to spend some money on this game because I just hate my life that much. Here, Garfield is showing off the 39th anniversary hat. I realize that I'm two years late, but I'm alright with that, as long as it's the quadrigenial plus or minus one. So I've gone over all of the important mechanics at this point. The ultimate goal is basically to collect hats. Really, you can say that about a lot of games. The collecting of hats is a rather common mechanic now that I think about it. Well. If novelty hats are the meaning behind our existence, I'm glad to exist. I like hats. They're nice. Beyond hat collecting, there are a few more mechanics that are less integral 
towards game progress. Remember those items that I mentioned, the ones from the chests. If you collect together a certain number of items in one of several combinations, you can cash them in exchange for coins. Honestly, I don't see the point in this mechanic, and I've never bothered with it. There are much faster ways to earn coins in this game. One of those ways is through the free spin. Once per day, the game allows me to spin each of these two wheels. The first spin determines a prize, either food or coins, and the second applies a multiplier to it. There are a few achievements for completing basic tasks, like buying a hat. By the way, there are even more ways to waste real money, apart from buying hats. For only three dollars, this power-up allows the player to play at any tent within a mile radius, without having to physically move within its regular range. Seriously, who do they expect to waste that much money on such a lame power-up? It doesn't even increase the number of games that you can play within that hour. The eight-hour cooldown still applies. Garfield Go used to do promotions with various brands. Last summer, I heard something about a partnership with 7-Eleven that made certain items spawn. There haven't been any active promotions in the time that I've been recording. It seems that there haven't been any in a while. I suppose that they've stopped since the game waned in whatever amount of relevance it once had. Honestly, I'm surprised that the game is even still online after two years. Clearly, someone is still spending money on it. Really, for all that I know, Garfield Go could be very popular in some obscure part of the world. Some countries are a few years behind the US market in terms of which video games are popular. For example, the Master System continued to be popular in Brazil, even through the early 2000s. There's this folder in one of the menus that's full of comics. Sometimes a conic panel will appear in a chest along with a hat. If you manage to get three of a set, you can read a whole comic. I actually appreciate that the developers put these in here. They integrated the source material into the game in an intuitive way. Of course, there are a lot of comics in here, and the odds of getting three corresponding panels is quite low. I haven't had much luck with the comics appearing, so I only have a few. I think that they spawn less frequently now that the promotions have ended. That's my hypothesis, at least. The developers obviously put a lot of care into Garfield Go's art design and user interface. The raw passion for their work leaves its signature on every screen. For example, here's the notification icon. The art department crafted this beautiful gray rectangle. The overworld is equally stunning. It shows a photorealistic satellite image of my exact location. The level of detail is actually quite incredible. It even shows the small buildings. The buildings and the interface are great and all, but what I find to be even more captivating are the bodies of water. Um, they're blood. Either that or red algae, but they look like blood. I mean, I knew that Roth Pond is polluted, sure, but I never thought that it would get this bad. I don't know exactly how this came to pass, but Garfield is visibly upset over it. Once upon a time, there was probably a lot that we could have done to prevent our waters turning into blood. Maybe we should have taken to heart Al Gore's warnings about climate change. Maybe this is divine punishment for people kind's continued decimation of Earth's bountiful resources. Whatever is the case, the implications are pretty clear. Garfield Go is a harbinger for the end of days. It says so right here in Revelations. <clears throat> I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out its bowl into the sea, and it became like the blood of a corpse. 
and every living thing died that was in the sea. The third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel in charge of the waters say, Just are you, O Holy One, who is and who was, for you brought these judgments. And that's only the first three bowls. How much crazier can the coming apocalypse get from here? Well, I have a few theories based on my own interpretations of Veggie Tales Deep Lore. Let me break it down. Bowl 4. All of the beaches in France will overflow with the broken corpses of Garfield's progeny. Bowl 5. Angels will descend from the sky and physically assert their dominance over the last surviving epic gamer. Bowl 6. India will harness the power of Red Rain to develop light speed travel, propelling themselves millennia past the technology of every other country. Bowl 7. Um, dogs and cats living together. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the overabundance of blood in this game isn't a use of biblical imagery. It could just as easily be Shakespearean. Maybe Mike Pence will stand before the Senate as blood pours from his every orifice. Then the senators will happily wash their hands in his rejuvenating blood and bring fair fortune to America through him. We will enter a new era of economic prosperity, in which all of the residents of Flint have nutritious, non-GMO blood on tap. Or something. With this in mind, a little eutrophication isn't so bad. Maybe I can learn to love Roth Pond in all of its they-have-to-drain-and-refill-it-every-summer-before-it's-suitable-for-any-type-of-sporting-activity beauty. The mechanic of feeding Garfield is really cool, don't get me wrong. However, I think that Freight's Atag severely limited the game's potential in the sense that it's only augmented reality. What I want is a full virtual reality Garfield Go game. I say, give me my Google Cardboard, plug me into the Ethernet, let me approach Garfield in his own world. That would be the zenith of immersive gaming, right there. So, that's Garfield Go for you. Despite it having needlessly complicated gameplay, and being a hastily made blatant cash grab entry into the niche genre of walking simulators, I kind of had fun playing it, to be honest. I don't really know how to end a review, so... Bottom text. Hey, there are fish here. Cool. Bye, fish. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Plus, my mom has red hair, so.